Okay, hey everyone, thank you very much for ILSI uh, for the invitation. It's a great honor. My presentation is titled Metabolic Interactions in the Gut Microbiome, Simulation and Applications in Foods and Health. I'm from ILSI Surandino in Santiago of Chile, and I'm from the Catholic University in Santiago de Chile. So, diet, it's one of the main factors guiding our gut microbiome composition and also um, transition and also gut microbiome diversity. Uh, high fiber diets are usually associated with uh, great health, prebiotics, right? Uh, and uh, diets poor in carbohydrates are usually associated with uh, poor health and aberrant microbiomes. And actually, diet is one of the best ways to improve our health through our gut microbiome. And there's much we know now with the revolution of the gut microbiome. One great example of how diet imp impacts our health is in the newborn, in the infant, where breast milk has a high concentration of milk oligosaccharides, and those fed beneficial microbes in the baby, and therefore the infant has a better health compared to uh, non-receiving breast milk. So in the gut microbiome, it's a really complex community of uh, trillions of microbes, but um, in general, complex polysaccharides can be fermented or accessed by a few gut microbes that we call them primary fermenters, and they share uh, in metabolic intermediates with uh, a different set of microbes, secondary fermenters, and it's like a trophic chain, a trof and that res results in the production of different metabolites where uh, acetate, propionate, and butyrate are key short-chain fatty acids that result in several health benefits for the host. So the gut microbiome, it's a complex community and there's multiple interactions that you can deduce from this uh, <laughs> complex diagram. But we thought that metabolic interactions between these microbes can help predict somewhat the microbiome composition given any specific diet that we receive. And in that sense, the gut microbiome can be considered, uh, can be understood by simple microbial growth equations like microbial growth, biomass production, substrate uh, consumption, and also um, product production, but including those metabolic interactions we showed. So for that, we took a simple system consi consisting on four different gut microbes from the bifidobacterium genus, E. coli, lactobacillus, and bacteroides. So we tested two common prebiotics, one are fructoligosaccharides, and the other one, it's um, two fucosylactose, which is an HMO. And uh, we measure on experimentally two major short-chain fatty acids, which are acetate and also lactate made by the system. So there's a whole mathematical process in making a predictive model. I'm going to skip a bit of that. But uh, this shows uh, having paired co-cultures, so we grow two bacteria at the same time. And this is the relative abundance of each one of the pairs. And this is the, what the predictive model is predicting, right? And uh, you can see that, in general, the prediction is somewhat very much similar compared to what we see experimentally. So that means that metabolic interactions can explain, in great part, the composition of a simple community of gut microbes. This is a validation using a more, more, more complex microbiome in, in a bioreactor. We also um, measure acid production in the system, and you can see that the red dots are experimental measurements, and the blue lines are the, what the model it's predicting it's going to be produced of that specific acid. And in general, there's a good agreement between the model and the experimental data, but in a few cases, we missed somewhat what's going on, so that means that there's room for improvement of the mathematical model. So with that, we later, we later uh, move to try to simulate how the infant gut microbiome adapts to dietary changes. We normally change our diet, basically, and a few infants go through a mixed feeding from formula to infant or breast milk. So we took a simple system in a continuous bioreactor. It's a simple system in vitro with four, the same four gut microbes. And we try to simulate what happens to this system when we go from 
infant formula with fructigosaccharides to breast milk basically uh, dominated by this 2FL, which is an HMO. So this system, this uh, figure shows the total biomass of the system, how much the microbes grew. And you can see that in 12 hours, there's, there's a stabilization of the consortia uh, up to 12 hours where we made the switch. And you can see that after the switch, the total biomass or number of bacteria went down and stabilized around uh, six hours later. So that adaptation period, it's what the system takes from adap adapting right from one substrate to the other. And in the phosphase, there's a clear dominance of the lactobacillus strain. And after the switch, after di dietary change, we see increases in B. infantis and also in on E. coli. So this is a subset consumption on the system, meaning that how much carbohydrate was left. And in the phosphate, there's zero, which means that the microbes were actively consuming the fructooligosaccharides in the media. Then uh, at 12 hours, we made, we made the switch, and the 2FL accumulated first. But after this point, the substrate started to be more consumed than it entered the system, so that the, the consortia was ready to use it. Uh, and you can see that also the acid production going from lactate dominated at the first by the lactobacillus strain, but then it switched to a mixed acid production made with acetate and also lactate. We also applied our predictive modeling capacities and trying to see what would happen if we go from one diet to the other. And in on, one, on, on each phase, there's one micro dominating the system. You can see that the, the model predicted that the carbohydrate after any switch will increase up to one point, and then it's going to get consumed after the adaptation periods. And then the acetate and the lactate are going to build up, and then they're going to be washed out after the switch. So it's, uh, there's a, a few other simulations in progress in my group right now. So we finally use all these mathematical tools, engineering tools, for designing uh, microbial consortia or probiotics, but more than one strain. Maybe we can use four or five different ones. And for that, we use genome scale metabolic modeling in combination with mathematical algorithms for designing specific communities that perform specific metabolic tasks. And our goal is to design consortia that have anti-inflammatory properties, reducing inflammation in cell culture. We also use ecological approaches for these gut microbes, using uh, species deletions and also identifying keystone, keystone species in the microbiome to identify and design microbiome consortia that can be used as probably therapeutics. So with that, thanks to my lab, uh, thank, thanks to Ilse Surandino and uh, my collaborations, and thank you very much for your attention.